the study of wave interference. I would want us to study some concept about this and we need to go then straight to the content. Now wave interference uh, occur due to superposition of waves, uh, the resultant displacement being the sum of the, diff the separate displacements of individual wave motions. You look at the diagram we have here, we have some wave moving in this direction, a pulse, and then the other pulse coming in this direction. So at some point there would be an experience of the summation of these pulses in terms of amplitude and what we end up with is what we have here in green. So this is actually a type which we are going to talk about as we move on concerning this idea of wave interference. Now, in simple terms, interference uh, is the phenomenon that occurs when two waves meet while traveling along the same medium. So that is basically it, trying to describe this in simple approach. Now, there exist two extreme cases of this interference. We have constructive interference and we have destructive interference. In the case of constructive interference, this occurs at a location along the medium where two interfering waves have a displacement in the same direction, like the case we just had uh, 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 in this other section. We have this in, in, in this direction, and we also have this other one in the same direction of, of displacement. So when this sums up, we end up with constructive interference. Now, destructive interference, on the other hand, occurs at any location along the medium where the two interfering waves have a displacement in the opposite direction. So there is some kind of cancellation that is taking place as a result of this. So you want to look at a figure here and see this phenomenon in a clear way. So when we talk about uh, two sources, S1, and S2, and the, the waves come from these sources, of course the distance between the wave fronts gives us the wavelength. We want to think of a case at point Q, what happens there? If we realize that these waves arrive here in phase, that is what we have in this case, you have this in the same direction, okay? then we will end up with a summation of this wave to end up with a bigger wave. And this is constructive interference. If we have them in different directions, as we have seen, in the opposite direction, what results is a complete cancellation. And this is destructive interference. So this is basically what happens when we have two sources of waves and they interact in the same medium. Now, continuing on this concept, we need to think of uh, the distance from source to that point of observation. Let's say S2 to Q from our diagram is greater than S1 to Q by the amount this dis difference, that is this distance S2 to Q and S1 to Q. The difference in this measurement is what we call path difference. Now, uh, when the path difference equals to a whole wavelength, the waves arrive at Q in phase, resulting into constructive interference, what we had discussed earlier. The same situation arises when there is no path difference. That is, if we had been up with this N as zero. Okay? So, uh, in short, when we talk about constructive interference, this path difference result into a whole number of the wavelength. But when we have talk about destructive interference, then we have a fraction concept or the fraction part of the wavelength. In light, when we're talking about interference, dark and bright fringes are observed for destructive and constructive interference respectively. So in short, when we talk about constructive interference, we're talking about bright fringes that will be observed. And for destructive interference, we'll look at, we'll get dark fringes observed. Now, for this to take place, 
the following conditions have to be met for the case of light. The sources must have exactly the same wavelength and frequency to get these extreme conditions or uh, perfectly dark and perfectly bright uh, fringes. The two sets of waves must have roughly equal amplitude and the two sets of waves uh, must originate from the same source, that is, they are coherent. Okay, So these properties must be met or these conditions must be met for us to experience uh, wave interference, especially in light. Now let's try an example just for us to understand this better. We have two sources of waves, x and y, separated by a distance of 7.0 meters. That means if you bisect this, you'll end up with 3.5, 3.5 at this point and there are observation points at Q and R. So the question here is, describe the nature of the sound heard at point Q and R, having it in mind that the wavelength of the emitted sound is 2.0 meters. Let's, take off, let's think of the case at Q first. So at Q, I will want us to consider the path differences, or the path difference, so the path between x and q from the diagram is actually equal to what we have from y to q. So if you think of this distance, it can be obtained by the square of 3.5 and the square of 6 summed up. Then we obtain the square root of that, that is Pythagoras theorem, to end up with this length. Doing that for this case, will end up at 6.95 meters and trying this as well will give us the same value. So that simply means x to q is equal to y to q. If you have those distances uh, the same, that simply means the path difference is zero. And when we have the path difference zero, we are talking about constructive interference. You can find out uh, the properties of the respective waves when we talk about constructive interfer interference observed at that point. What about R? At R, we now see some difference uh, from the illustration itself. So X to R, sorry, this is supposed to be R, so X to R is 7.5, X to R is 7.5, and y to r, sorry, this is supposed to be r, y to r is 6.5, okay, that is from Pythagoras theorem, talking about this distance from here, which from here to this point, is supposed to be 4.5, and from this point to this end is actually 2.5. So when that is, uh, that is uh, carried out, we end up with a path difference of 1.0. Now, if you take path difference over wavelength, which is 2.0, we end up with a half. So this fraction of a wavelength simply indicates a destructive interference. So I think that is clearly understood, how we arrive at that. And therefore, as far as wave interference is concerned, I hope you understood it in the most simplified way. Thank you.